Welcome to CIHT Podcasts. Right now, there are a lot of things challenging the construction sector. Supply chain issues, cost increases, COVID, skills shortages, to name a few. But there is also a need for the construction sector to challenge itself to create a more diverse and inclusive environment, to become more digitally enabled, to reduce costs, be more efficient, and so on. Could the solution to the latter help solve the former? Welcome to today's CHT podcast. I'm thrilled to be joined by Carol Massey, Head of Construction at the Access Group. So Carol, welcome. You have over 30 years experience within the construction sector. Can you tell us a bit about your background and how you got into the sector in the first place? Hi, Justin, and thanks for um, having me on the podcast. Looking forward to this discussion. Um, So me in construction, well, I started construction, as you say, over 30 years ago. Um, Yeah, I was uh, actually my first step into construction was um, at a a print shop doing uh, picking up the manuals from Lang Construction. So those are the day when you're doing pre-qualification submission and tendering for projects where you'd have these big fault documents and you'd have to price them and then you have to bound them. So my job was actually picking the print the documents up, the final tenders, and running them through a Kodak printer, copying them, and then walking back and taking. So that was my first step in construction, which I always revert back to. And then really my first real working experience with, with Barrett's The House Builders, which was really, really good. Uh, my experience there was working doing manual processes in the accounts department, dealing with subcontractor payments and learning everything that way. And it always intrigued me because there I was in the hub of the back office where there was QSs, um, accounts, finance in terms of payroll and all of that. And we had like, this is how far back, we had Securical coming with the, uh, the salaries that we had to bag up on a Thursday to pay the men. So that's how you know, historically, I was in, involved in construction. And then I always had, um, you know, the passion of technology. And I, you know, worked in a civil engineering company, was the, the main project lead within that civil engineering company. We introduced technology to, you know, streamline processes. And at the time, I'm, you know, I'm going back 20 plus years ago, you know, things were, were all manual and, you know, the guys on site were receiving material. So, yeah, my background's all always been about construction. And in my latter years, yeah, my passion has pushed me straight into the technical world, technology world and, you know, speaking to industry experts and uh, large construction companies and how to embrace technologies, because I'm sick of the term that construction are the dinosaurs of technology. I'm not going to have that anymore. I'm going to make sure that, you know, that 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 uh, that label is removed. And, you know, during 2020, we've seen how lots of changes has happened. So, yeah, my background is is very much about, you know, being an ambassador for construction sector, but more importantly, really, for the technology that we can, you know, bring into businesses. Yes. So that 30 years ago, it wasn't so technologically enabled at that point. Uh, I mean, one thing that I'm conscious of in the construction sector is maybe a perception, and I think it's probably backed up by some evidence, is the sort of white male uh, dominated sector is is maybe not so good at embracing diversity and inclusion. How how have you found that then in terms of coming from not not being white and male in terms of working in that environment that's, that's, that's maybe a bit heterogeneous? Yeah, so it has it has had its challenges. Um, I think, you know, in terms of myself directly, um, I've I've seen the advantages in terms of me being, you know, a female um, and a female of colour in the sector. In that, you know, when I, you know, have in the past gone to construction businesses, I'm talking about years ago. It, you know, you're there, Carol Massey talking on the phone. I've got an English accent, right? So, hello, hello, yes, I know what I'm going to do. I'm going to come down to your offices. I'm going to show you how to use the system, blah, blah, blah. And then when I turn up at the office, you know, the, 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 you know, the, 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 the picture of their face is quite like, oh, and I'm like, yeah, I am black. <laughs> so it's it's been that kind of... Um, I kind of find it funny sometimes, you know, just reflecting back. Um, I've never seen it to be a challenge for me personally in that um, was was I discriminated in terms of being able to go different places and engage or affect 
elements of my job, no. Um, in terms of construction, um, you know, the, the clients that I dealt with in the past have been very receptive in that, you know, actually, this is quite nice to have a female that can talk the talk and walk the walk and understand what a CVR is and what a goods received note is and what adjudication and variation. So from that perspective, in terms of my key area of knowledge, it wasn't a problem. But then on my when I moved into the technical world and, and you know, one of my position was I, I was, you know, kind of plugged into doing sales because I had this good relationship with clients I was then moved from an implementation role into a, a selling role because you know the, the view was actually she engages you engage so well with clients <clears throat> they're more likely to trust you and place orders with you so I was then kind of like into a sales role and I ended up being the um one of the highest selling person, well, revenue generating person. And in terms of that, that caused a bit of challenge as well in that, um, you know, in the role it was male dominated. And um, as an individual, as a female, <clears throat> looking back and actually reflecting on some of the experiences, I, I you know, I at times was singled out and challenged more and, you know, asked the questions, how sure you, you know, and I remember, you know, regular monthly sales meeting I used to make sure that I'd leave home at six o'clock to get to the office for that meeting so I could pick where I sat so I felt kind of like comfortable and know that you know if I'm going to get picked on I can kind of you know position myself and you know just looking back on, on that um, and in terms of my experiences of that one of the things Justin that I'm, I'm really really supportive of and you know and I'm on a number of different uh, discussion and forum is for women in construction you know I'm the I'm on the softer skills of construction in terms of the technology and, and being like a service provider but there are women that are in the sector that are on the tools um, and day to day want to do good for the sector as females of colour and diverse um, that are faced with lots of <clears throat> lots of challenges. So I'm, I'm very, very much supported, very vocal in, in doing my bit that I need to to make sure that, you know, we've, we get the whole diversity. You know, other sectors do it. So why not construction? <clears throat> and, and at the access group, given your the sort of a business that's got over 3000 employees and 30 years experience and 47000 plus customers I mean there's obviously you're now head of construction there do you see the the people that you're bringing into the business do you see diversity and inclusion being a kind of stronger component of of the kind of makeup of the workforce that you're you're bringing forward 100 <clears throat> percent the the greatest thing that attracted me to access you know even prior to acquisition you know yes it's a much bigger business organization to what we were before being acquired um is you know the whole you know edni and it's it's in the culture you know what access to is is not a tick box exercise and our leader is very much you know we have regular updates and we've got women that are in senior leader positions within the group so for me you know coming in and and being you know heading up construction you know for me looking in is looking on it is quite a great kudos and I hope that you know from a, a point of recruiting and you know I'm always looking out on so you know LinkedIn or you know looking at for individuals that I think oh you know they'd be make a great member of team and I'm always promoting the role so the culture of access is very much about inclusion and and giving everyone doesn't matter who you are, the opportunity to um, make a difference, but also progress your career. So the culture is already there. It's not, you know, like, oh, we need to improve it. It's already ingrained from the CEO, right from the senior leadership, right the way through to individuals as well. There has been news coverage of supply chain shortages and cost increases across industries. How significant has it been for the construction industry? Oh, that's been a massive challenge. Um, if we if we, you know, look back at 2020 when, you know, the whole pandemic and there was very much the focus that construction needs to continue and build, build, build. 
coupled with 2019 when the whole Brexit and the uncertainty of everything, the whole um, the whole material shortage is a massive topic, right? It's 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 huge, and it, the the problem you have is you know projects haven't been able to progress at the speed that they would have been originally tended for, right? So programs of of delivery of projects, whether it's civils, whether it's infrastructure, house building they're not at the levels where they need to be in terms of delivering and coupled with construction businesses trying to manage the whole cash flow workforce everything so having that material shortage coupled with you know no lorry drivers you know limited lorry drivers it's a massive thing so i've been speaking to a number of of tier one contractors and and one of the things that they're doing to help the subcontractors is is providing the materials so They are actually, you know, if the package of work that's been assigned is include materials, the tier one contractor is saying, look, we will do the ordering of the material on your behalf, A, to help cash flow, but we're a tier one. And in some instances, the tier ones have been able to negotiate quicker with the supply chain. So, you know, it is it is a, a big issue. And, you know, there's been some some reports in in the press that um, certain material like timbers and and, and especially for the house building side, that there could be potential delay to back end of next year in 2023. How real that is, is, you know, in the context of, you know, some of our clients have just been awarded massive projects to deliver 134 units. So there is an issue. um, It is is something that, you know, the contract, you know, the construction industry is mindful. And unfortunately, it's like anything, you know, the more there's demand for something, the more they then put the price up, which is, again, it goes back. You've tendered for a project at the time. It was probably and, you know, with these construction projects, you price a job you know, well in two years before it sometimes be even starts to be delivered. So you would have been pricing based on prices at that time. And I know in tenders, there's, you know, there's there's um, provision made for price fluctuation, but not for the percentages that you're seeing now. So you've got a situation where the main contractor is now saying to the client, um, I've got a variation on, on, on pricing, not typically now a variation that the work has changed. It's <clears throat> the materials are difficult to get so it it is it is a problem but what what construction do very well they pull together and and there's been a lot of you know as i said discussion you know the tier ones are looking at how they can help the lower tiers and um and again this is where you know systems are, you know play a massive role because having that early visibility of <clears throat> of price at that level you know in terms of the budget and now that the cost is going to be this from the supply chain you want to know that straight away and and as soon as possible and that's where manual process versus technology is is plays an important role the technology side and having that early visibility and warning is 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 fundamental interesting so yeah the systems are the sort of technological systems in that place uh and the sort of IT and digital systems. How much do they have a dominance in the industry, do you think, in terms of, you mentioned sort of starting 30 years ago, obviously digital twins or mm. BIM was a distant dream probably in someone's mind at that point, but but now they're a reality. How much can that help address costs in the industry then, if you are digitally enabled? 100%, it, it, it's, it's kind of, why wouldn't you? Yeah, so we've seen over the last, 12 24 months where large brand name in construction companies have folded <clears throat> why have they folded because they've you know either incorrectly priced or they've overvalued projects and why have they done that because information hasn't been right so they've not captured the information in the right format to actually track on a monthly basis or on a weekly basis a number of contractors are still and i will say still using systems that say right okay on a monthly basis i'm going to check whether we're still on target to the project now you and i know you know what happens at the start of the month could be significant you don't want to know about it at the end of the month so having 
that early warning that the system is um, in sync and you're capturing the information from from budget to the cost of labour plant material subcontractor costs is fundamental. So it's really important that you know the systems that are adopted and enhance are are are, are maintained and the whole user adoption is, is fundamental because we talked about Justin you know, attracting the skills, you know, the technology is so important to ensure that we, we attract the right skills to the sector. So, again, we, we talk about individuals, you know, apprenticeship schemes and, and, and things that are, you know, bringing, um, you know, young, fresh blood into the sector. That's that's so, so, so key. And, and really a concluding question would be about skills in the industry. Do you think we're facing a skills shortage? Is there something to be majorly concerned with that we just won't have the workforce to manage the construction projects that, that are in the pipeline? Or is that, again, uh, as you alluded to with uh, the cost increases and shortages of timber, that maybe there's a slight alarmist news agenda behind those stories? Or, or, or do we have a genuine problem? To be fair, Justin, you know, we've been talking about the skill shortage for years in construction, you know, even going back to when, you know, I was working in construction, it's always been um, an issue. And we was, you know, people have always said, well, you know, we need to bring a construction in. I think historically, you know, when there's been a recession, it's previously been the construction sector that has always feel, felt the, 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 the effect of a, a recession. Um, great thing, you know, COVID has shown that, you know, government policies and investment, it's all about build, build, build. So, you know, attracting um, construction, um, individuals into construction is, is, is at the forefront. I think because of, um, you know, where we are with projects and major investment, it is it's now it resonated it's more in the spotlight because um there are great investment and projects that are are being done so um there is an issue and and how that that needs to be addressed and you know again you know in in discuss, discussing this with a number of clients is is actually looking right you know so i'm a construction business right so i've got lots of people that have been committed to my business been here for a number of, of years and there are some people that have been doing the same role but understand the full dna of the business so what businesses need to be do, doing and maybe they don't have the right systems inside inside their business so having a great hr system allows you to track every single in, individual also track whether your EDNI, which is an important thing, and that's going to be for another subject because that's going to be key to be winning any future jobs. But it's all about looking at who have you got within your business today? Who can you actually upskill and move them into different roles within the organisation? Because nothing's worse or morale breaking if you've been working for a company, a construction business for a number of years and you see people parachuting in. Oh, such and such a body's come from this bigger organisation to take this senior role. And that person that's been in the business for a long time doesn't get the opportunity. So inwardly, businesses, construction businesses need to look at their people that they have, promote them up if they want to be promoted and give them different roles because they understand the business. And that then leaves the opportunity to bring in new blood as well from different sectors. I've always said that, you know, there's different skills that can be applied into construction. If, you're, if you've worked for financial services, if you've worked for retail, if you've worked for any of other sector, you can come into construction. There's, there's no ifs or buts. You can find a job in construction and use those skills. And what we need for the construction sector to do is actually be on, on that mission, look at their internal resources, bring them in, look at some of the kickstart graduate scheme, schemes, bring them in, bring the individuals, make it so compelling and enjoyable. And again, it's about making you know, working in the sector fun, right? I, I love it. I love, you know, if I could, you know, get a hard hat and be out and working on the tools, 
you know, if, if I could. And I, it's not saying that I can't retrain because I'm old enough to retrain. Everyone's able to retrain, but I need to be vocal. I want to be able to, to get that message out and say, look, construction is a great sector. Also, what we need to be doing is getting children, you know, getting thought leaders into the schools and colleges and universities talking about how great construction can be. Speak to the girls that, that you know, oh, no, I want to do hair and beauty. Yes, it's great, but it doesn't pay as, it pay as much as construction, right? Construction's great. You can get your nails done at the end of the week if you chip it, but you're, you know, it's a sector that's really, really good. So, um, yeah, so I'm, I'm passionate about it and I can talk about this for, forever, but the main thing is is to look at from an internal perspective what people what teams you have in roles and promote them into other roles within the organization as you strategically grow and then look at bringing in graduates and other youths into into the sector and also work experience get out to the schools and say you know i'm a construction company i want to give work experience to to individuals to show how great our business is and how great construction is as well well, that's great. I, I did. We did have a focus at the start saying challenging construction, but I think the message is more the opportunities within construction there. And in terms of diversity and inclusion, it's it's very interesting looking at the existing workforce and giving them diverse and inclusive opportunities to, to expand their horizons in terms of becoming more digitally enabled or, or, or whatever is needed by the way that the industry is going. So, um, Thanks uh, very much for your time. That was Carol Massey, Head of Construction at the Access Group. Thank you very much for your time. You're welcome. Thanks, Justin, for having me.